Hello, my name is Kiriath, and I didn't realise the plastic contemptor could get any better. Firstly, a quick thank you to Dungeons & Lasers Encounters for sponsoring this video. We'll hear more about that later on. Secondly, it doesn't say Thursday up there. Ignore that. Just ignore it. I'm going to edit it out. I'm, going to just, I'm just going to stick Sunday over it. You can't stop me. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? It's already going to be in the video. You can't change that. I'm just going to pretend that this is new and that I wasn't massively busy and just didn't get around to it during the week. I'm just going to pretend that's what happened, all right? You can't stop me. It's already done because I've already edited this and recorded it. You're watching it from the from the past. From I've already confused myself. Let's just have a look at this, all right? Because I am genuinely, genuinely excited. You might think, why are you getting excited about a plastic contemptor when we already knew we had a plastic contemptor? That's because I had a few questions about the plastic contemptor when it was first shown off, which was things like, what about all the extra weapons? What about all the stuff that it comes with? Like, do we get all the weapons? Do we need to still go to a Forge World for certain loadouts? Is that how things are going to work? Because... I can kind of understand it if that's the case, but it is a little bit clunky, maybe a bit confusing to do it that way. My worry was, okay, we've got the cool new plastic contemptor, fully posable, but then if you've got to go to a separate website for all the stuff, is that not just a bit of a faff and a hassle for everybody involved? And while that is still something that you kind of have to do for some stuff, if you're going to streamline everything and make a big deal about basically refreshing Horus Heresy with a bunch of plastic stuff, or like the cool core units getting their own plastic versions, do you really want to have that extra layer of complication when it comes to those new plastic versions? No, you don't. You don't want that. And Games Workshop doesn't want that either, because they have, they have given us the good news. The excellent news. So, when this thing is launched in its own box, not in the big Age of Darkness box, but in its own separate box, it is going to arrive with all posable parts, two heads, one of which has got an optional targeting array, which is really cool. Four chest plate styles. Solid. Love that. Two big old punchy hands. I I love the fact that they've said two big old punchy hands. Did I write this article? No, I didn't. But I would have written that if I had. Hats off. Five different guns to go in those fists. Eight different arm-mounted guns, usable on the right or left side. A Havoc missile launcher, fetching shield, and scroll details to smart new chassis. So, look. Oh... Oh, the choice. The options. The options. <sighs> They're all there. They're all there. And that makes me mega happy. Like, really, really happy. That was literally the one concern that I had. Genuinely, when it comes to the plastic contemptor, when it comes to it being released in its own box, whenever that turned out to be, as it turns out, soon, they've said, it's going to be pretty soon, that was the only concern I had where it was like, well... They might just take the one that's in the Age of Darkness box and put it in its own box and then just throw it out. Like, it, it's possible that they'll do that. And whilst I'm all for having a, you know, fully posable plastic contemptor, and I'm not going to complain about that one bit, it would be nice if they did have all the options easily accessible and not in resin. And that's exactly what they've done. The fact is that I cannot help but be happy about that because it's exactly what I wanted the whole time time. The thing is, I'm not hating on the Resin Contemptor, okay? I'm not hating on it or saying that it's bad, and I think the Resin Contemptor, just as a concept, still has its place in the Horus Heresy. Before we get into that, though, this video is sponsored by Dungeons & Lasers Encounters, which is in its final 48 hours, so if you've been considering going for this, and you've been kind of back and forth, now is the time to back the project and end up with a shed load of quality terrain. I'm pretty sure most of you will have already heard me talk about how much I like this terrain, and I'm not just saying that because they're sponsoring the video, I'm saying that because I have a metric shed load of it, and <laughs> I have a metric shed load that's painted, actually painted, and used regularly. I've got possibly the same amount again, still to be, still to be taken out of the boxes and painted up, so yeah, when I say I like it, I'm not making that up. I've got a fair amount. Oh dear God, I'm looking at the pile and it's filling me with distress. The only thing that I've ever found lacking about Dungeons and Lasers is the lack of outdoor options and this literally fixes that. That's the whole point. Encounters is all about what you encounter out in the wild 
whilst you're having a nice travel around with your party. So you've got a bunch of different options. You've got the Elven Woods, the Swamps of Doom, the Land of Giants, which I absolutely love, and a big box full of monsters and creatures to murder your party with. Plus a significant number of stretch goals. I mean, god damn, there's quite a lot of extra stuff <laughs> Here, there's extra buildings, an extra boat, some nice ruins, there's a few more creatures. There's quite a lot to be had out of this. Plus, it looks like there's going to be something a little, a little secret, a little extra on the way on the last day of the campaign as well. If this is tickling your fancy, you can use the link in the description to go to Dungeons & Lasers on GameFound and back the project. Thank you very much to Dungeons & Lasers for sponsoring the video. Now let's have a look at some more Dreadnoughts. Now, no matter how much I do love the fact that we are getting the Plastic Contemptor with a whole shed load of options along with it, the fact is that I'm hoping they still don't do anything to get rid of these. I'm hoping that the Legion-specific Contemptors stay because this is where I feel like this makes the most sense in terms of having that distinction between the easily accessible, cheaper option and the Forge World option. Like, really makes sense. You can build the foundation of your army when it comes to the plastic side of the Horus Heresy range, but if you really want to customise it, if you want to personalise it, if you want to lean into a Legion's aesthetics, that's when you go to Forge World. I feel like that should be... That should be the way to do it. I'm really hoping that they just keep these forever and a day because there's so much like extra personality contained with these contemptors that will be necessarily lacking in the plastic one. The fact that the plastic one has got four different chest plates is great because that gives you some uniqueness and variety from Dreadnought to Dreadnought if you've got multiple of the plastics. But those four options will never be the same as having full-on Legion iconography on said Dreadnought. There are some aspects to these that you just can't replicate, and I'm really hoping that they don't ever get rid of these. Every single one of them brings something to the tabletop that the standard plastic one just isn't going to bring. This is where I think resin has its place. I mean, that's kind of what Forge World is to a lot of people anyway, outside of the Horus Heresy. You have units from Forge World. You have you have the like that extra storefront, so to speak, but it feels more specialist. It feels more specialised. It's something that is kind of above and beyond Games Workshop. It's almost like, well, if you're really into the thing, then you can go to Forge World and get one of the ridiculous resin kits that's very, very expensive compared to the plastic ones, which are already kind of expensive, let's be honest. It's almost seen as like the next step when it comes to hobbying. And I feel like... That's not necessarily a bad thing as long as they maintain it by keeping the stuff that is currently available, just keeping it around and making it like, making it a really nice optional extra. Like, you don't need to buy any of these to be able to field a Contemptor. You don't have to purchase them. But if you do, you're going to get something that is high quality, you would hope, that actually is is worth getting because of it being that much different from the base version, which is easier to buy, it is available in plastic, it is more accessible overall. That's what it should be. The default option should always be far more accessible than the specialised one. Just don't get rid of the specialised one. The fact is, though, I'm probably going to end up with a bunch of these, because I, I love the Contemptor, I quite like Dreadnoughts as a whole, as you may have picked up on by now, and the fact that it has all of the, like, the fact it has just all the options you need just in the box, that's, that's a big sell for me. Like, I, I didn't really expect them to do that fully, so it's just nice that that's the way it's gone. Of course, the downside, I guess, in one way is that if you want to do a double gun loadout, then you'll have to buy two of them, but then if you know people who are building contemptors and they have guns that you don't need, that, like, they don't need and you've got ones that you don't need, you can always swap around and magnetize and so on. I think given what we know about Games Workshop and the way they put these boxes together, I don't think it would have been reasonable to expect two of every single gun in the box. Would have been a really nice surprise, but it was always quite unlikely, let's be honest. I'm just very much looking forward to getting my hands on this now. The question is, what do you think? Are you happy that that's the way they've gone with it? Do you think there's any risk of the, uh, the Legion-specific ones disappearing, or do you think we're safe on that front? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Thank you to Dungeons & Lasers Encounters for sponsoring the video. Feel free to click all the things, Patreon, video, subscribe, all that stuff. Click it if you like, don't click if you don't want to. And as always, there's an affiliate link in the description for Element Games, which you can use to support the channel if you would like. I leave it in your capable hands. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.